The Scarlet Ibis is one of the national birds of Trinidad and Tobago. It appears on the country's coat of arms, currency and official documents and serves as a symbol of national identity. In flight, Ibis flocks are a spectacular sight to behold. This display, at one of its main habitats in the Karani Swamp, has gained international attention. The Scarlet Ibis is a medium-sized colonial waterbird which is indigenous to Trinidad and Tobago. It is easily distinguishable by its bright red bodily plumage with a lighter shade of red on its neck, legs, underparts and head. Further, the bill, tips of the longest flight feathers and the eyes are black. They are aquatic feeders which consume a variety of crayfish, crustaceans, mollusks, insects and worms. Their preferred diet are crabs which are rich in carotenoids and are responsible for the deep red color of the species. Historic reports indicate that the Scarlet Ibis is believed to have inhabited the island before the 1840s. The species is known to occur mainly along the west coast of Trinidad in places ranging from the Karani Swamp through Brickfield and Rosalac as far as Ikakas. Today, the Scarlet Ibis can be reliably found at the Karani Swamp which is its main reported breeded site. However, researchers also suggest that the species can be observed breeding in the South Oropooch Swamp. Threats to the species include human disturbance, habitat destruction, and climatic changes. By far, poaching is its greatest threat as its meat is considered a delicacy as well as an aphrodisiac. If the issues impacting the species continue, it may jeopardize the future of the species and may result in extirpation of the species from the island. Various historic reports suggest that during the 1970s to 1990s, breeding at the Karani Swamp halted due to poaching, human disturbance and pollution. The main factor was considered to be ecological changes in the Karani Swamp, namely saltwater intrusion as a result of the alteration of water courses. This led to the provision of unsuitable feeding habitat for nesting birds and nestlings. However, in the mid-1990s, breeding resumed in the swamp. Internationally, the Scarlet Ibis is listed under Appendix 2 of the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. This means that while the Scarlet Ibis may not be threatened with extinction right now, its survival still depends on strict regulation and management. The species is also listed under Annex 3 of the Protocol Concerning Specially Protected Areas and Wildlife. This annex also calls for the regulated use of flora and fauna in order to ensure and maintain populations at the highest possible levels. The Scarlet Ibis was designated as an environmentally sensitive species by the EME in 2018. It is also protected under the Conservation of Wildlife Act and its habitat is protected under the Forest Act. One of the primary nesting habitats for the species, the Karani Swamp, is currently being considered for designation as an environmentally sensitive area. This move will offer the area additional protection with more stringent penalties. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined $100,000 and face imprisonment for two years if one commits an offense as outlined in the EM Act against an ESA or ESS. However, it should be noted that the designation of the Scarlet Ibis as an ESS offers the species protection in any locations found, not just the widely known sites. The Scarlet Ibis is a main attraction for ecotourism in the Karani Swamp. Tourists and tour operators alike have applauded the move to protect this major attraction. I think it's excellent. Um, being the national bird, I think it needs protection. It, um, when you destroy any species, it eventually affects the entire ecosystem. So it's important that you maintain the ecosystem. Um, and so what you're doing is helping to maintain the ecosystem, not just the scarlet ibis, but it contributes to the environment in a whole. I feel proud to know that our government is actually taking action to protect the things that we call unique in this country. Um, growing up here, I realized, and myself too, I'm guilty, we, we took for granted what we have here. For instance, the Pitch Lake, the Bird Sanctuary. Um, we're out here for the first time. Some of us not seen 
what we, we have here naturally and the fact that the government is trying to preserve our history by doing this, I think it's, I'm actually proud to be a Chindigonia. I'm really impressed at the work that they are doing now and um, it's really good for the wildlife and the sanctuary too as well. Besides these color tigers, there are a lot of protected animals inside it too as well. And the sanctuary is really an area for everything to reproduce and so on, right? It's a haven for the birds too. So I'm really um, glad that the fine has been raised so they could see that they are serious now in protecting our national bird. The earliest and most renowned name in the Karani Bird Sanctuary tour industry is Nanans. Alistair Nanan is a third generation tour guide and has grown up in a culture of conservation. My grandfather was the one who started this struggle in the early 1930s. So over 90 years ago, we, Nanans from generations started this struggle with the Ibis. So we, we will be happy for my grandfather to my father now the struggle has come to us. We wouldn't stop, but we be glad because the, the government can help out now with the production of the scarlet ibis. My grandfather in the early 1930s um, went around collecting signatures and he mounted a petition. And this petition made it into the forestry division and this is how the, the um, Carnival Sanctuary Park was formed in 1948 because of his petition. And my father, when he died, my father didn't stop there by carrying on, in, carrying on his father's legacy. He did well. Um, he, he fought Shell to stop the bird from coming up here in the 70s. He didn't stop there. He uh, aligned himself to be part of uh, uh, committees and, and he sat on boards and they drafted policies and, and you know the way forward with the Karani Swamp and environs in terms of conservation and preservation. So my father was very, very active. In his 65 years um, he spent in the Swamp and environs. He even got President Medal for his dedication and they renamed the Swamp after him but it's now called the Winston and Karani Bird Sanctuary. The Forestry Division is one of the key agencies responsible for enforcing laws that protect spe threatened species, including the Scarlet Ibis. Additional conservation efforts include captive breeding. The Point of Pear Wildfowl Trust is the first known location where the species nested and bred successfully since July the 11th, 1991. The species can also be observed in captivity in the Emperor Valley Zoo. Effective and efficient management planning for the species is hindered by lack of research, lack of coordination amongst governmental and non-governmental organizations, lack of education and awareness material on the species, as well as challenges with enforcement. There is a need to fill knowledge gaps related to the biology and ecology of the species, the health and susceptibility of the species to disease contamination, population dynamics, the socio-economic valuation of the species, and habitat delineation and requirements. The education strategies include interactive workshops, lectures, and interviews designed for both children and adults from varying backgrounds. Media releases, signs, posters and brochures are also used to help increase awareness of the Scarlet Ibis. Management actions for the species may involve training and capacity development with governmental and non-governmental organizations, legislative initiatives, conservation and protection programs, as well as education and public awareness campaigns. A species management or recovery plan will be developed in collaboration with relevant stakeholders to ensure that the Scarlet Ibis population is improved and is sustained at healthy levels and that threats are reduced. Conservation, protection, improved awareness and education and respect for this environmentally sensitive species will ensure that the splendor of the Scarlet Ibis in flight, feeding and at rest can be enjoyed by this and future generations.